Welcome to How to Train Your Service Dog with Dream Dogs. I'm your host, Victoria Warfall. Today's episode is all about planning and your dog's timeline. So we're talking about your training binder first, and then we're going to talk about your dog's life timeline. And it's keeping track of everything and what all's going on with you and your dog. So first, the training binder. Why a training binder? Well, you don't want to have papers here, papers there, papers, papers everywhere. You want to have one place to store everything. So what we recommend you do is pick up a binder. It could be an inch or inch and a half or two inch binder and get those dividing sections. Okay, once you get the dividing sections, you're going to label them. And then all the paperwork that you get, all your notes, all your record keeping is all in one place. You want to make a fancy cover. You can slip it in there and a fancy uh, sleeve for the side there so you can see it if you put it up on your bookcase. And then it's grab and go. And you have it there. You can add things to it. You can pull things out of it really easily because it's all there and it's all totally organized for you. So different sections. Here are some ideas on what you can label those different sections and what you can put in them. Your first one is the purchase of your dog. Now, if you got your dog from breeder or if you you got your dog from a rescue, or if somebody gave you the dog, you can still put all your dog's papers, all the contracts, maybe pictures of the parents if you have them, anything like that. If you do AKC registration, well, my dog's not AKC registrable. Well, there's programs for you as well uh, to get you that AKC number once your dog's been spayed or neutered. But everything dealing with purchase and papers all go into that first section because it's usually the first one that you get when you're dealing with your dog. So purchase. Your second section, medical. And that's going to include medical records. Whenever your dog goes to the vet, you're going to put those papers in the medical records. When your dog gets any testing done, put them in there. Uh, The veterinarian. So your dog goes in and gets his shots. Put the papers in there. Gets the rabies tag and the rabies certificate. Put the certificate in there. Uh, Your dog goes in and gets OFA testing for hips and elbows. Put those in there. You have a mobility dog. When your dog's 18 months old, you go in to the orthopedic vet and you get the x-rays done. You see that it's closed. He's been approved for mobility work. Put it in there. All medical testing. And then you can write notes on it as well. That's going to give you, usually when you go to the vet, they take your dog's weight. So you'll have, you know, how much your dog weighed at these different appointments. Uh, any notes that you want to add to it, you just, you add on your receipt right there. And then you also know what your dog has and when your dog's due again, you know, for, uh, for rabies, for distemper parvo, uh, for Bordetella, if you do that, any sort of vaccinations. Uh, your next one is going to be goals. Isn't that a great, I love goals. I'm very much in the goal setting because I do best with goals. So I assume everybody does best with goals. Uh, So for this section, you're going to have charts and outlines for your training plans for basic, advanced, and off-leash obedience because your dog needs all of those because there may come a time where your dog, you drop the leash or your dog, the leash wasn't put on properly. Your dog gets out of the leash. So every service dog needs to be off-leash reliable, period, end of story. They need to be off-leash reliable, guys. Service dog skills. And that includes things like under and touch and tug, uh, service dog tasks. And those are the tasks that help you out. Um, and that could be, you know, brace. It could be counterbalance. It could be anxiety alert. It could be deep pressure therapy. It could be wake me from a nightmare. And then the public access. So how is your dog out in public? How is your dog in the bathroom? I brought a couple service dogs in training. I always try to do a bathroom trip when I have them out with me. Uh, sometimes we go in there when the toilet flushes, they'll freak out. Or the slippy surface, because I don't know why, but so many bathrooms feel like they're so slippery. You know, the dog will freak out. Uh, water running in the sink, the dog will freak out. Oh, hand dryers, some dogs will like, oh, I don't know what that is. So we have to use that to work with them. So those are all public access things. Oh, it's all bathroom things, but still public access things. How's your dog out in a restaurant? How's your dog at a movie theater? How's your dog at a restaurant if crumbs drop all over him? Um, or there's food on the floor or gum underneath the table. You know, how's your dog in all of those? So what you need to do is have charts or outlines or training plans done up for all of that stuff. 
So for us, what we recommend doing is taking index cards and writing everything on a separate index card. So for us, we had index cards and it said, you know, sit, down, place, stay, come, touch, tug, you know, everything. We, we broke everything down onto these index cards and I taped them up on the wall in the office. And as I started working on them with Gypsy, I moved them to the other side of the wall. So then while I'm training her, I just had to look at the wall to know what we were working on and she had already started. And then I could move to, you know, maybe the other side of that second wall, you know, maybe a third wall because most rooms have four walls in them, right? Um, But you could do that for the ones that she's aced or put a gold star on it or something that you can see across the room. And then as I was looking at what I needed to work on with her from that first wall, I could say, okay, well, she knows sit and down in place. What would the next logical one be? It would be stay. So I could take that and put that in the, okay, we're going to work on this. And if you have a big bulletin board or cork board, you can do that as well. I just use the wall with all the index cards because that's how I roll. Uh, But that worked for us. And then what you can do is as your dog's getting them all, you know, write those down in your training binder as well. I'm going to leave the cards up there because that will really help you and you don't want to have to flip open every time you need it. And this one, if uh, she's not doing good with stay, let's work on come. I can move that over as well. Uh, For it, you know, what are you going to do? And and this we're going to talk about in the next section with the dog's timeline as well. But you need to have those goals. You need to have the charts, the outlines, the training plans, what you worked on those different days. Um, And we're going to get to that with the logs in just a second. You also want to have a section for formal classwork. So maybe certificates from classes that you've taken. We used to give certificates for normal group classes and privates and stuff. And what happened was uh, it was a puppy class and I gave them the certificate that they had attended puppy class. And one woman I overheard her say to her dog, look at this, you've graduated. Now you don't have to go to school anymore. And the business person in me and the puppy loving person in me said, okay, we're not doing certificates anymore. Now, I'm always happy to do a certificate for somebody, especially for service dog work. But as a general rule of thumb, I don't do certificates anymore. But like I said, always happy to do them. Um, Letters of praise from instructors. So this you might have to ask for. I have done some of these for uh, for clients. Usually it's the service dog ones. And it's usually because they're moving to a new location. And the landlord just wants it or they just think it'd be nice to have to present to the landlord whenever they're putting their application in. Uh, And some of them haven't been service dogs. Some of them have just been pet dogs. So if the dog was doing well and if the owner did the stuff and really made the commitment to it, I'm happy to write up a letter. Um, We'd also get some of them where, you know, they'd sign up for classes. They'd come to one. They'd come in late. They don't want to do anything. Well, they're not going to get a letter of praise. Um, Pictures from classes. So today's day and age, everyone has their phones on them. All the phones have camera capabilities. So we always would go around and get pictures. I don't care if people printed them up and put them in their training binder. You know, I'd encourage it. If they get pictures, I'd ask them to text it to me or send it to me. Um, so we could share those as well. And I still get pictures from clients to put up. And I love that because I love sharing their successes. But all that should go under your formal class work, work section. The certificates, the letters of praise, the pictures. Another one would be official certifications. So obedience evaluations. And this would be your CGC, your Star Puppy, your CGC Urban, your CGC Advanced. Your public access test, not just the paper test, but possibly if you have a DVD with it on there, if you want to burn it to a DVD or, I mean, heck guys, in today's day and age, we don't have a DVD player on our computers anymore in the house. We have four computers. Not one of them has a DVD on it, a DVD um, drive on it. So what I would do if, if this was me is I would get one of those zip drives, those portable thumb drives, and I would just put a copy of the video on there. I would also load it up onto YouTube. And if I didn't want to share it with the world, I would just mark it as private, you know, for anybody, nobody but me, for anybody who has my name can see it, right? My account. Um, But that's what I would do. So you have that public access test, Uh, any behavior or temperament tests or evaluations. So there's the ATTS. That's the American Temperament Test Society. Um, They'll do it. When we first moved to Gainesville, there was a woman who was doing temperament evaluation. So I took uh, Boo and we had her do a temperament evaluation on Boo as well. Uh, And I kept that in Boo's training binder. 
just because it's somebody saying that my dog's a good dog. Um, service dogs can be therapy dogs. So if that's something that you're pursuing as well, you know, I would include that information. I would probably actually do therapy dogs as a separate section in my binder. Uh, next is task training logs. So this is what I was telling you about earlier. Uh, you're going to have charts showing date, hours, location, and goals. And if you check out our show notes on our website on Dream K9, check out the show notes for this episode, and you can download a chart that we use. Ah, isn't that awesome? Uh, so for this, for the date, you'd put on today's date. Maybe it's January 1st, right? January 1st, the hours. I work two hours. Location at Disney World. Goals to have my dog uh, work around fireworks, around um, people, and around crowds, and ignore them and focus on me. There you go. That's your line. Um, you also want to have the chart sh- with the various task work. So, okay, so that was January 1st. January 2nd, we worked for 30 minutes on retrievals at the ranch. And my goal was to have her pick up the toy and deliver it to my hand. And we got it. Mark if the goal is achieved or if a problem came up. Remember that goal? So we want to have that goal. I want my dog to walk through Disney and ignore people and distractions and the fireworks. Goal achieved. Yes, we did. Goal wasn't achieved. No, my dog was a monster. She uh, got freaked out with the people. She didn't retrieve the thing and deliver it to my hand. Problems came up. So if there's a problem, how are you going to go around and correct that problem? Because it's not enough to acknowledge that there's a problem. Now you have to change your plan and add in how you're going to fix that. So my dog got freaked out from the fireworks. What am I going to do to correct that problem? You know, my dog didn't do well on the crowd because somebody stepped on her tail. What am I going to do to correct that problem? So you need to have this in your training logs and it helps to keep you focused and on track. Uh, We used to, for boot camp dogs, we would work on what they needed. Uh, and what we did is we put together, when we put together our 60 Days to Your Dream Dog, we made sure that now we follow that with the dogs who come in for just normal boot camp and even the service dog boot camp. And having that when we have multiple dogs in is so much easier because it keeps us on task. What we do whenever they first come in is we print it off and we write down the dates beside it that we're going to be doing these things. And as we're doing it, we cross them off. And then we know what we're working on, that the dogs had that firm foundation that they need and what our goals are, what's coming up next. So you also can do one with task and public access videos. And again, you can do it on DVDs or you could do it on that thumb drive. I would do it on the thumb drive if I was you. I'd also upload them to YouTube if I was you. Uh, Document various states of training and proofing in public. So you need that, guys. You need to make sure that your dog is good out in public and that you have proof that your dog's good out in public. Document it and demonstrate it. So, you know, uh, today is January 3rd and we went to um, the mall over in Orlando, whatever the name of the mall in Orlando is. And, you know, we worked her and here's the video of us working on elevators in and out of stores. Document it, demonstrate it. Okay. You want to have those on there. That could be a whole other list on public access and task stuff, or you can have it under your task training log. And then have a miscellaneous section. Any letters that you get about your dog. Uh, News articles. Um, My dogs have all been in the newspapers at various times. So, you know, we have news articles. I've been in the newspaper at various times. So, you know, I have those um, from special events that you might have done, uh, from landlords, from veterinary staff, from trainers, from groomers that speak of your dog's good manners, your dog's training, your dog's behavior. Um, Photos, photos from parades, from community fundraising events, uh, posing with different mascots, uh, you know, going to Disney, going to sporting events, you know, those photos, that's, that's a big one, guys. So that's your training binder. Okay, you're going to have the purchase, medical, goals, formal classwork, official certifications, training tasks, task training logs, task and public access videos and miscellaneous. And anything else, what, what am I missing here? What would you want to add in there that I didn't already mention? Go to Dream K9 and let me know. Tell me what I need to add to this. And maybe I will do a part two with things that I didn't mention on this one. 
So the next thing we want to talk about is a life timeline for your service dog. So you need to sit down and come up with your dog's life plan. Now, this is a concept from the exotic animal world. Uh, One of the women that we worked with, um, who worked on, um, she did a couple workshops and we went, we're certified in her method. She is from the exotic, uh, exotic animal world, not the pet dog training world. So she includes things like this, and it is such a neat concept, especially for those with service dogs that we stole it. (laughs) What you want to do is you want to plan out your dog's life in pencil because things will change. For example, what we did with Gypsy is this. She was born August 2017. So that's when she was born. So at two months old, October of 2017, we pick her up and we start her training. Okay. Three months old which would be November of 2017, we had a workshop in Tampa and I really wanted to take her. So because I knew there was a workshop in Tampa and we had only had her for a month, what does she need to know to be successful at that workshop in Tampa? Then I wrote them down. At four months old, um, we had another workshop in Miami. So what do we need to teach her so she is successful on not only the longer car ride to Miami, But for that, we also figured by four months old, she should be fully potty trained. So if we hadn't already started the public access training yet, we would start her in the pet friendly stores and at Disney. At six months old, which would put us in February of 2018, evaluate her as a service dog in training and test her for her AKC canine good citizen, which as you know, we did. We did that. She passed both of them. She's doing amazing that way. At 12 months old, which puts her at August of 2018, evaluate to continue as a service dog in training, do her public access test, do her advanced and urban canine good citizens if we don't do that beforehand. And after she turns 12 months old, um, one of the things we could do is take her to get her prelim OFAs done. At 13 months old, which is September of this year, is the IACP dog conference that we want to go to and we want Gypsy to come to. So again, what does she need at each of these levels? That means we have to start teaching her ahead of time. So if I know she has to go to conference at 13 months old, she needs to be good on place. She needs to be able to hold a down stay for at least two hours. Um, She needs to be good with crowds. She needs to be good with a lot of people. Um, She needs to ignore them. She needs to not have any training potty accidents, which she hasn't had in a long time. You know, so what does she need? And then what do I have to do to get her there? Say she's due for vaccines at that point. You know, make it up. Say she's due for her, her, some vaccine at 13 months old. Well, at 13 months old, she's going to be at conference. And if there could be a bad interaction with the vaccine, maybe I want to time the vaccine to come after conference. And this is going to come more true as we're looking at finishing off her service dog training as we're looking at breeding her. So when she hits two years old, which is August of 2019, I think her birthday is um, August 11th. So August 12th or later, we can ske- we can get her scheduled for getting in and getting her official OFAs, her hips, her elbows, and then also her eyes and her heart tested for breeding. So that means I'm going to have to make the appointment beforehand. So maybe I'm going to want to call up in June or July to make the appointment for August 12th or later to get her health testing done. And then how long does it take for that health testing to come back? If it's going to take me four weeks to get all that health testing back in, then that's whenever I can decide if I'm going to breed her or not. So say we do the health testing on August 12th and everything passes and she comes into heat a month later then we're fine. We're set. But then I need to also know who we're going to breed her with if we're going to breed her at that point. And if we have something planned, you know, it, it it's going to make a difference. So that's where having that lifeline for your dog is going to come in handy. You know, I have a move scheduled here because I have a move scheduled here. I'm going to have to do this at this point. So I'm ready for that at that point. So what plans do you have? Are you moving? Do you have a vacation planned? And what does your dog need to know to do when that occurs? And that is your lifeline. That is how you figure out your lifeline. And again, put it in pencil because things can change. Remember I said at four months old, uh, once she's fully potty trained, start public access and pet friendly stores and go to Disney. Yeah, that actually happened during um, her first week with us. Uh, When she turned nine weeks old, we had her at Disney for the first time.
you know, it happens that way sometimes. But, you know, we need to do this. We need to update it. I mean, we do this for the farm animals that we have as well, because it's a great idea. You know, so we know the cows, if we uh, put them with the bull at this point, they should be making a baby at this point and popping a baby out. And then we can watch and see when the babies are coming. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode of How to Train Your Service Dog with Dream Dogs. Again, I'm Victoria Warfel with Dream Dogs, and our website is dreamk9.com. That's D-R-E-A-M, the letter K, the number 9.com. And we do have our exclusive service dog training program where we work with owner trainers, helping them get ready to be their dog to be their service dog. Everything from choosing a candidate to basic advanced and off-leash training, public access training, service dog skills, service dog tasks, marker training, evaluations, and more. Our Facebook community is called How to Train Your Service Dog Group. I hope you find it and you join us there.